Hello YouTube, in this video I'm going to attempt to answer the age-old question Why do we lift? It's a question that someone asked a long time ago, actually five months ago on the channel and I needed some time to actually process it because there's a lot of things to say about the topic in reality and therefore this is mostly going to be a sort of philosophical musing meaning that I'm not really going to follow a script I have a few pointers here but since this is mostly going to be a love letter to lifting I don't want it to sound too forced. It's going to come from the heart because to me, lifting is everything. I owe a large portion of who I am to this practice and I truly love it, meaning that I love it with all of my heart. And I know that a lot of people on the channel feel the same way. And therefore, I want to reflect. I want to just send all of the gratitude I have towards the practice and just appreciate it. Appreciate what it's done for me what it's done for you and what it's going to continue doing for lifters generations and generations after we will all be dead. And therefore, it's going to also be part reflection in a sense where I'm also going to try and help people who might not be 100% in to just completely let go of their reticence and just succumb to what lifting is. Because at the end of the day, the best decision you can make is to just be full throttle about this. If you just let yourself be absorbed in the practice, you will be rejoiced. I cannot explain how important it is to stop caring so much about the results, to stop caring so much about what people think and to just let yourself be. Just let lifting surprise you and you will, at the end of the day, be glad that you did. So let's start with this list. Because even though I said that it's going to be mostly philosophical, I still have certain points to make. So first off, the question, why do we lift? Why even ask the question in the first place? Well, it's because lifting is something very strenuous and it's something that takes a lot of time and energy. It doesn't take any money, unlike what some of our uh, YouTubers want you to, to believe. It really doesn't cost anything to lift, meaning that it's a very cheap hobby. All of the stuff get, that gets added afterwards, the supplements, uh, all of the special training plans, the diet plans, all of that is superfluous. You don't need that. And reality, it's just adding stuff on top of a practice that is pure to start with and that never needed that in the first place. People 50, 60 years ago built big, good-looking bodies without the help of all of that bullshit. And therefore, you can too. If anything, all of that is just going to slow you down. So just put that aside and focus on lifting. So, again, why do we lift? If it's so hard, if it's so time, uh, time glutinous, it's, it's very chronophage, as we say in French, what is the point? What is the purpose? Well, first off, it's to change who you are. And that is the reason why a lot of people start lifting. Why do we lift? Because the state that our body was in before we actually engaged in lifting displeased us. We did not like the way we looked. And I am the perfect example of that. I hated the way I looked. I couldn't stand the way my body felt, the way my body appeared to the wood. The only thing I wanted to do was to hide it. Uh, I really remember being 14, 15, maybe even younger than that, and always wearing coats, always wearing things to just make sure that no one could see me. I would let my hair grow long and greasy so that it would cover my face. I would, I would want to disappear in the eyes of others. And that was because what I was presenting to these people wasn't to my liking. It really wasn't that they didn't like it. That doesn't matter. What mattered is what I perceived, what I felt about myself. And what I felt was a lot of hatred. And lifting saved me from that because it allowed me to finally make the body that I want. And there is nothing more important than waking up every morning in a body that you love. I cannot stress that, stress that enough. A lot of people have mental issues. A lot of people have stresses in their lives. They're unhappy. And the very reason why they're so unhappy is because their spirit is trapped in a body that they just do not feel at home in. And this feeling is indescribable, but it can make your life void. You can spend an entire life of misery because you never figure out that that's the problem. And the very easy fix is lifting. Lifting is the hammer that you finally find that, that allows you to sculpt your body. That pile of garbage that you couldn't even stand looking at in the mirror finally takes a form that at first is acceptable, 
then tolerable, then finally something that you can rejoice in. Look at me now. I'm shirtless in my videos. Why do you think I'm shirtless? One, it's hot. Two, because I look amazing. I, I, I look great. And I feel great telling you that. Because I finally reached a point in my life where the way my body looks matches what I want it to be. It matches who I am inside. And this took me a long time. It was a long road of never being happy with myself, constantly doubting myself, to finally one day, one day, waking up feeling good. And I cannot tell you when it happened. I cannot pinpoint it precisely. It just happened. It's the reason why I tell people who ask me, when will I reach this? And when do I finally get the body I want? I don't know. And it doesn't matter. Because at the end of the day, you asking yourself these questions just slows you down. Just let the process completely possess you. And one day, you'll feel better. I guarantee you, you'll finally feel better. And just for that, I owe my life to lifting. I wouldn't be there without lifting. And by that, I don't mean that I would have taken my life. But rather that the person I would be without this, without the weights, wouldn't even be worth living. I can see myself. I can I have enough imagination to know what I would have ended up as without lifting. It's a sorry sight. And I'm glad that I escaped it through this practice. This practice that did that for me and can do it for you. And this is also the freedom of being human, by the way. I mean, a dog is born in the body of a dog. That's, that's it. It's, he's a dog. He's going to look like this for the rest of his life. For us, we get to decide. And just that is amazing. Just for that, free will that is attributed to human at birth is just an absolute. It's something that anyone who is not aware of is missing out on because it truly is something that makes life just an endless sea of possibilities. You can look whatever way you want and you have all of the tools to look the way you want. It's just effort and time. This is why we lift because we invest something that yes is valuable, but what we get in return is so much more valuable. Are you kidding me? It's not even close. What we put in, the investment and the return that we get, it's the best stock option you've ever put your 401k in. It's, it's something that anyone who has never experienced cannot understand. But I know that if you have put the work in and you got the results, you understand. You understand that at the end of the day, all of it was worth it. I know a lot of people, again, ask themselves, why do I even do that? I don't get any gains. Is it even worth it? I, I hear people ask this. Is it even worth it? Let me ask you this question instead. If you weren't lifting, what would you be doing instead? What? Learning a new language, working extra hours, building a business? I don't think so. You would just be farting around, doing nothing. So yes, it's worth it. Because the option that would have replaced lifting in the first place would just be non-productive garbage. So yes, lifting is, of course, worth it. Because it also teaches you, day in and day out, that you have the power to change. And this is, again, a lesson that lifting teaches you that you never forget, forget and that a lot of people need to hear. They need to be taught that because there's too many people who tell themselves that they're a certain way and they can never be another way and that's it, that's the way life is. This is idiotic. But the problem is that until you have learned through your body, the spirit fails to catch up. And for me, I know I was stuck in that too. I was, I wouldn't say black pill because the term didn't exist back then, but I was feeling sorry for myself, always complaining. And lifting came into my life, kicked the door down and said, hey, put the work in, see the results you get. All right, try for six months. Do you feel better? Okay, cool. You know what that means? It means that you have the power to change your life. So now no more complaining, go on, keep pushing. And from that day on, I kept pushing. And I know that beyond lifting, beyond muscles, this is more important as a life lesson. You'll see throughout this expose that the answer to why do we lift might not be what you think. It's not just physical. Most of it is spiritual. The lessons it's going to teach you are invaluable. We also must talk about, of course, as I said, the physical, because even though it's not just physical, a large portion of it is. And for a lot of people, again, me included, you're going to be stirred towards lifting because you want to be more attractive to others in one way or another. 
And it can be a little, a, little, a little bit of both, meaning that for me, I know that I started for myself, but a lot of the influence that pushed me and, and actually helped me stick to it was also others because, and it's something that I want to discuss in another video, but I was, of course, feeling very bad about myself, but all of that came from the way others looked at me too. It was my perception of the way they looked at me, of course, but seeing a change in their eyes also helped. Because of course, I mean, I'm all for self-sufficiency and for not caring what others think, but I understand that for a lot of people, it's not realistic. At some point, the way others perceive you plays a role. And in reality, the only way you can finally be free from the judgment of others is when you fully love yourself. Meaning that I am now at a point in my life where the opinion of others doesn't matter. Why? Because I'm fully convinced that I'm the greatest version of myself. And therefore, I do not accept to be judged by people who are not even one-tenth of what I've accomplished or what I've done, at least in lifting. And so this, of course, is a point that I've reached now, but I know that in the past I wasn't like this. And therefore, it's okay and not shameful to start lifting for others at first. Meaning that for a lot of young men, for example, you start lifting because you want to get girls. And in reality, this is really smart on your part. You have made the correct assessment women like muscles but and this is something i'm not going to expand too much on because i will eventually talk more about women and you know dating and all of that stuff because i know i have a lot of young men on this channel who are interested and therefore why not talk about it women already like muscles they like the visual appeal of muscles mostly because of biological roots that they don't fully understand themselves and of course some cultural aspects but the most important thing to me is also the, the spiritual. I mean that they like the physical a lot of that because it tells something about you. You have muscles, this means one thing. You are a hard worker, you never give up, you stick to things, so you are committed, you're a committed individual, you're not afraid of the physical, which is incredibly important if you're a man, and you are capable physically as well. All of that is more attractive than any six pack in the world for a woman. She might tell you that she likes your core, but what she likes is the hard work you put in to get that core, if you catch my drift. And therefore, you putting all of your energy into that just to get girls is valuable. You will quickly realize that at some point, it will stop mattering so much, maybe because you're going to finally get enlightened and realize that you need to be lifting for yourself, or because you will find also that you might have gotten to a point in your muscular development where you've, you've went overboard, meaning that this is now the point where women are not so interested anymore because it's too much. And I know some people disagree with that. I have had m multiple experiences myself with people tell me that it was too much and I believe them, meaning that I do truly think that they weren't just n nagging me. It was the truth. They truly believed that. But it didn't matter because it's my vision, it's what I want. And so as you lift to become more attractive, you in reality become more attractive to yourself first. And this is what makes you attractive to others, by the way. Confidence is the most attractive trait, male or female, I don't care. It is just a magnet. And if getting confident has to happen through you lifting, then so be it, lift because at the end of the day, you are getting the result that you want. But in terms of attracting others, I also want to say that this can also push you towards some dangerous practices. Because if you fully invest yourself in lifting strictly to please women, for example, well, you're going to find that what women want, A, is not necessarily what they actually want, meaning that they rarely say what they mean, just like men, and two, will lead you down the path of mediocrity because what women want is what like a, six, a vague six pack some like chest and that's it like the brad pitt physique in fight club this is nothing i mean if that's what you want go for it sure but you're limiting yourself right if you start dating a girl and she tells you oh don't get too big like that's the big special right you you might have heard that don't get too big what do you do now do you stop lifting or do you actually continue on that path? That's a question, because if you lift it to become more attractive for women, you've accomplished that. So do you stop? That to me would be a problem. 
since at the end of the day, the self prevails. You're quickly going to realize that no, you didn't actually lift for women. You lifted for yourself and yourself first and foremost. And the people who live for themselves are the people who make it. They are the people who stick to it. Because just like anything in life, if you do something for the approval of others, you're going to eventually stop. Because what if they stop giving you their approval? Or what if you don't need to keep working to get that approval? It's already there. Well, you just do nothing anymore. And this is definitely not why we lift. We don't lift for that. We don't lift to please someone for two months and then just be done with it. That is just not the way. Because you will quickly find out that the more you lift, the more your value as a person increases. Because the more confident you get. I have confidence in high regards, meaning that I truly believe that pride is essential. You don't want it to become a sin, you don't want it to become a flaw of character and verse into narcissism. But I still believe that in the spectrum between being a complete, complete wimp who's always self-deprecating and always saying, oh, I'm terrible, I want to die, and being the guy who always says, look at me, look at me, the middle ground is much more towards narcissistic than you would think. Meaning that society wants you to not boast, so society wants you to not attract attention because it doesn't want you to shine. Since this entire world actually functions as crabs in a bucket, People don't like it when you succeed and therefore what they try to do is they bring you down by telling you that, oh, you're having an ego and you're starting to fill yourself and blah, blah, blah. You should be filling yourself. You should be pride, proud. You know why? Because you earned it. You put in the work, you got the results. You get to be proud of it and no one gets to tell you not to be. These people are just jealous. I highly encourage you to not actually listen to them not only for yourself, but also for others and themselves, right? You want to be able to shine your brightest because you're showing people that they have the permission to do it too and the potential, right? It's what I do on this channel. I show my results, not to boast, but so that you can know, hey, he did it. Why can't I? Well, the answer is you can, you can. I did it. So why couldn't you? This is why I lift. This is why you will lift to finally achieve that potential that was always within you. But you know what? If you never actually lift and never reveal that potential, then that is just all for nothing. And you will also be able to tell yourself, like so many people do, that you never had potential in the first place, which is a lie. It was just dormant and you let it just die. So I say shine. Be proud. Be boisterous. Who cares? I'll go out in public without my shirt. I'll go on the beach without my shirt. Why should I cover up? I look amazing. The people who look like shit should cover up. This is that inversion of value that makes no sense. Greatness should be appreciated. If you lift, you are going to elevate yourself to a status that the average normie cannot even touch and is going to make them resentful. But so what? They need to see what they could be doing if they weren't so lazy. If I go out and there's a bunch of 30 year olds with a gut who felt bad about themselves, then I feel great about myself because one, I'm showing them that the way they're living their life is not acceptable, that they at some point missed the track. They, they forgot what it meant to be a man. And on top of that, it also shows to them that if they feel resentful towards me, it truly shows that there is a problem within themselves. Just like I told you that a lot of people start lifting because they feel bad, People who resent lifters tend to also feel bad about the fact that they're not doing it. You don't want to be that guy. He envy and resentment can keep you in a dark place and a place of mediocrity for the rest of your life. And the easy way out is to pick up weights. Pick up weights one day at a time. And before you know it, instead of being the fat guy with like a, a gelato on the beach who looks at the ripped guy and feels envious, you'll be the guy with a six pack. You'll be the guy with big arms or a big chest who mocks people. This is why we lift. Also to become shining examples of what is possible. And to also just, you know, fill ourselves. The, the, the very words, filling yourself, what does it mean? You, you're filling yourself. You're in sync with yourself. This is a good thing. It's not negative. It's always amazing. You should always fill yourself. Uh, not literally, please don't start doing that in public because then you're going to blame me and my bad influence for that. And I'm not responsible. 
And this, all of that also is directly aligned with the fact that you cannot buy a big body. So this is why we lift, right? You cannot skip the line when it comes to lifting. You have to put in the work. You have to put in the effort. There's no cheating. Or at least if storage didn't exist, cheating wouldn't exist. It's the reason why they're so damaging also in, in a sense. They take a practice that's pure and they introduce that one variable that makes it so that you cannot truly be 100% sure that the person is actually putting in the work. That is a different discussion altogether. But for this point in particular, this is also to me a, a very anti-conformist and a very anti-modernity stance. Lifting is anti-modernity because it's the one thing that is going against the grain. If you have money, you can buy pretty much anything. You can buy love, you can buy an organ, you can buy slaves, you can buy whatever. All of the things that people think are unattainable. If you have enough money, you will get them. You can buy a country. But the one thing that you cannot buy, unless you take steroids to destroy your health, is a big body. It's a ripped body. And just to get back on that for a second, it's funny too, because in reality, there's a second thing that you can buy to an extent, and that's health. Even though that's not true, if you have plenty of money, you can have the best doctors, etc. But to an extent, it's interesting to see that rich people who take drugs to have a big body, thinking that it doesn't really matter because they still have money to pay if something goes wrong with their health, don't realize that they are going to eventually reach a point where they went too deep and no amount of money can save them and now they have nothing. It's sort of the thing too and the reason why you want to stay natural. It keeps lifting pure. This is why we lift also. It's because lifting doesn't cheat. It doesn't lie. My favorite quote of all times, I think, is hard work tells no lies. And you could replace hard work with lifting. Lifting tells no lies. It will never betray you. It's never going to give you false hope. You're going to get what you put in. It's as simple as that. And this is also why we lift is because it's a faithful companion. It's something that a lot of people also desperately need for their mental health. And that is part also of that confidence thing. Confidence is mostly mental health. For me, I know that exercising my demons was done through lifting, but those demons were there in my brain, right? As I told you, it was the way people looked at me, the way they interacted with me, the way I perceived myself. But the root of all of that, the root cause was my mental health. And to me, I'm not a psychiatrist, don't take my word on it, but to me, the best thing you can do for your mental health is lifting. Nothing beats it. It's the reason why so many people focus on it and there's meme of people who say, oh, the barbell is my therapist, is because it's, it's true. It is a limitation to that, of course, but for a lot of people, this is what you need. The, the lacking element in your life is this, it's lifting. Once that block is put in, everything is going to be aligned and you're going to feel amazing. In terms of body too, I said that you cannot buy the body of your dreams. You have to actually put in the work. You'll find also that as you develop that body and you become more confident and your value increases as you become more confident, it increases because you become more useful. And that is a really broad statement. What does it mean? Well, there's a quote again by someone who is quite controversial in the fitness community, but it's one that I think is applicable. He gets a lot of shit for saying it and I'll explain why. Mark Ripoto said that lifters are more useful people in general and harder to kill. Of course, he had to add the harder to kill at the end to sound like a badass, but this is actually a very correct factual statement. A lot of people didn't like it because they're tiny little wimps who don't lift and they, they don't like it when someone puts them down for not lifting. And this has been my entire life of people telling me, oh, you think I'm lesser than you because you don't lift? The answer is yes. I'm not ashamed of saying it. I am above you because I lift. Unless you're also doing a physical activity that you're passionate about, if you do nothing physical with your body, yeah, I'm above you because I'm using my body. Why does it sounds so hard to get for some people. You're missing a big, a big portion of what being a human is. But I'll talk about these people. It's the too smart to lift crew. We, in general, tend to be really dumb, but it's the reason why, as I said, these people resent what Ripoto said. It's because it made them feel terrible about themselves and therefore they took it out on him. But he's right. 
People who lift are more useful. What does it mean? Well, first off, you're more physically capable. And that also is the, the entire discussion of functional training that is very interesting. But it is true that a guy who lifts is going to be more useful and more functional than someone who doesn't lift. I couldn't tell you the amount of friends I have who, when they move out and they go into a new place, they call me. Why? Because they know I can move like five boxes at a time. I'm not going to complain about my lower back. I can climb a flight of stairs without huffing and puffing. Unlike the rest of their friends, meaning that I do, I do more work in five hours than five of their friends do in a full day. Because I'm more functional. I'm a stronger human. And this is achievable for everyone, by the way. There's no restriction. Men or women, if you pick up lifting, you're going to become much stronger than the average person. And that can range from two to three times. Because an untrained human can deadlift what? If they're male, 200 pounds, maybe. If they're not too wimpy. Any lifter can get to a 400 pound deadlift. So you're literally twice as strong as an average person. In terms of actual strength, not potential. They could catch up to you if they trained. But they don't train. So it doesn't matter. And that applies to everything in life. Because when we move, what moves the body is the muscles. And therefore, if you develop the muscles, you're going to be a more efficient human. Even if you don't do like fancy functional training with a bozu ball, you're more, you're more functional by default. Tell a hundred people to bend over and pick up something. The lifters in that population will do it the more effi uh, efficiently with the least amount of uh, sheer, uh, sheer torsion on the spine and with just more regularity without getting tired. So yes, we are more useful. Lifting makes you more useful because you become more reliable. And that is also partly here. You lift, you build confidence. It's great for you, you feel amazing. But it's also great for people around you. People love confidence because it's something you can rely on. You can actually rest on that. And to go back to the topic of women, it's also why women love confidence. Because they need to know that their partner is going to be there for them. In case of crisis, you don't want to be with a doormat. You want to make sure that the man you selected is going to be standing strong by your side. Because, and that might be a gross stereotype, so maybe it makes me sexist, women tend to not be that resilient. Meaning that they're more emotional and they tend to fluctuate more in reality. Meaning that if men are like a mountain, women are like the sea. They have their own qualities, but they like that, that sturdiness. And it's the reason why women seek that in men. And the reason why men tend to seek other qualities in women is because they are seeking what they lack. And therefore, as you lift, you develop that. So you become a better man and you become a more attractive man for women, but also for others. You will find, and this, it's a funny experience, especially if you've been someone like me who wasn't really popular growing up, you will quickly realize that by lifting, you are going to develop such confidence and aura than pe that people, especially men, are going to be drawn to it and are going to treat you differently. This is a story for another day, but I remember the way I was treated when I was young and small. And comparing that with the way I'm treated now is night and day and a little bit humorous as well. Because I have dudes now who are just waiting for my approval where I can tell that they want nothing more than for me to just accept them which is one, a sign of weakness on their part. They should just develop that themselves, lifting. But on top of that, it also shows that even without opening my mouth, I have like the best visit card in the world. This is, this is what a body does to you, by the way. I don't have to tell people that I lift. They can tell, right? They know I lift and you'll make it too. I know some people think that they'll, they'll constantly look DL for the rest of their life. That's not true. You'll get to a point where people are going to notice. Keep striving towards that point. It is achievable for 100% of the population. But when that happens to you, you will quickly find out also that as your value has increased, the way people regard you has also increased because it makes you more attractive and attractive people have a very easy time in society in general, besides all of the envy that you receive, the swore shaming. But that is nothing because in reality, since you have become someone more resilient, someone more valuable, you will find that, as I said, people are going to try and take you down a peg, but that's because they perceive you as being higher than them. See the logic in here? It's the entire thing around swore shaming that I've actually discussed. It's in the description. People swore shame because they know that you're the strong. And in retrospect, it also means that if there are groups of people out there, 
who you are not allowed to make fun of or critique in any way, this means that they're the weak. So that includes fat people, for example. You cannot make fun of fat people. Why? Because everyone subconsciously knows that they are already at the bottom of the pyramid. So it's punching down in a sense. I won't talk about fat shaming today because, again, it's a topic that doesn't really fit in this. But in opposition, the reason why people give you shit is because they see you as the strong. So regardless of if it's actual respect or animosity towards you, it means the same thing. It means you made it. Once people start giving you shit because, oh, you lift too much or, oh, it's vain, it's ego, you made it. That's it. You have your card as a, as a certified lifter. This is why we lift. We lift to make normies seethe. Because when they do, we know that we're on the right path. When society tells you that something is bad, continue doing that. Usually it means that it's great. Look at society. You think these people know what is good? They don't. And so as your reality increases, as Ripoto says, you become more useful and also tougher to kill. He's not, he's not actually wrong. Uh, the more muscular you become, the tougher you are to actually snap into, regardless of your combat training ability, by the way. And as your activity develops and you start loving lifting more and more and you continue lifting because you get great results from it, you quickly realize also that you are starting to elevate yourself, both physically and mentally, as I said, because you are leaving the norm, right? This is the norm. This is you. You're above the norm, okay? And you're going to continue rising above the norm. And this makes you special. I, I, I know that it's now really from the point to say you're special because oh you're a special snowflake but you are special when you start lifting you have taken a decision that a large portion of the population has always failed to do you have taken the first step the first step of many that is going to continuously skyrocket your value as a person man or woman and you need to continue doing that and the reason why you need to continue is because one it elevates your, yourself which is always good but also because you quickly find out that in this case, what is virtuous is also what is efficacious. Meaning that lifting is amazing for multiple reasons. But the thing that always struck me is that it's the panacea. It does everything, right? It makes you healthier in many ways that I can't even begin to describe. Helps with blood pressure, decreases the risk of cancers, decreases the risk of diabetes, decreases the risk of heart attacks. Just with this, this is 90% of deaths. Most people die of this, and you're decreasing all of that already. You decrease the risk of getting sick because you're, you're boosting your immune system. You decrease the risk of workplace injury or just a freak accident because you become more resilient. Like a, a car accident that would kill someone who's normal could just send you to the hospital for two months. Why? You have neck muscles, right? You have core muscles. Your spine is tightened by very strong muscle fibers. And therefore, in a car crash, you're not going to be thrown around like a rag doll. You might actually have some integrity in your body enough to preserve your vital organs. Just that is amazing. I've heard of many uh, actual things that happen like this where a guy was supposed to die. Like it was, he got T-bone, he's supposed to die. And he end up, ends up with fractures. And the doctor is like, yep. So technically, you should have shattered your spine and your neck should have broken. But at the end of the day, you just have a, a strained neck. The muscles of your neck absorb the shock. That's amazing. And so this is for health, right? Straight up for health. It makes you better. Then after that, it also makes you more appeased. It gives you all of that dopamine that feels so good. Man, I remember when I started lifting and I couldn't wait to be done with training and eating because I knew that after an hour, the dopamine would kick and I would just like, I would sit on the couch with a manga and just have the time of my life. And I still have it to this day. It's a different topic altogether, but you also find that the more you lift, the more you feel that dopamine rush, the more you can control it. Meaning that I have now reached a point where I'm so happy with myself that I can just trigger those rushes of just good times and good feels, just thinking about it. Of course, it's not major, but I'm sure that many people can relate to that. I can't explain why, but it's like I'm more in tune with my body and my body is so constantly soaked in endorphins and dopamines that I can now control the release. Uh, I don't know if it's been studied scientifically, but what I can tell you for a fact is that 
anyone who lives has more frequent and more voluminous releases of happiness hormones throughout the day. That is incredible. It also helps with depression, anxiety, OCD. All of that can be taken care of by lifting. All of it. And you also develop what I could only describe as more smoothness. If you're someone who's very socially awkward, lifting will help you because lifting is going to one, make you more confident about yourself. It teaches you that you can get things done and change yourself, but you also start to care less and less what people think. And that is the way you're supposed to behave in society. The people who are the most needy and the ones who have the toughest time actually interacting with people are those who are constantly seeking for the approval of others. But lifting gives you that approval, so you don't need it in others anymore, right? You have just the need for the self. And this is why it's the panacea. It does everything. In reality, I could keep going forever because I cannot think of a single thing that lifting is not good at. I truly think it and I truly, uh, I truly believe it when I tell you that if tomorrow 100% of the world population started lifting, we would solve almost all of our problems. All of the issues of mental health would mostly go away. All of the problems of people who are just so deeply hating themselves and therefore hate others would go away. All of the problems with obesity, all of that, that just scum, all of that filth that has polluted our countries and that is making people weak and sick and die early, all of that would go away. All of the authoritarian governments, all of that would go away because people would become stronger. You need to be a weakling to let government dictate your life. The second you lift, you take control of your life. You don't need daddy government anymore. All of that would go away. It would beneficiate everyone. But the reason why these people don't do it is because it's hard. And they can't get through it. They can't break that, that, that filter that separates lifters from the average population. This is why I say that lifters are above, right? We're here. Why? Because we understand that pain is nothing. If the price to pay for all of the good things I described is pain, then give me pain. Give me all the pain in the wood. Pain is nothing. It's a sensation. I can ignore it. But the benefits, they're tangible. This is why we lift, for those benefits. And also because it is going to rewire your brain. It's going to teach you that pain is nothing, and pain is a part of life, meaning that if you can actually go through that pain, there will be une récompense. There will be benefits, things that actually will tremendously help your life. And that lesson transcends lifting because in reality, in life, everything worth doing is going to be tough. It's going to sometimes be painful. It's going to take a lot of your energy. And once you have accepted that, you're good. Like you are good for the rest of your life. You have understood the most important lesson. And as we do that, again, as we engage in these things that no one does, we rebel in reality. We rebel against a society that is doing the exact opposite. Oh, you, you're feeling bad? Take that pill. We do what instead? We do push-ups. We go to the gym. We feel better. We don't need your pill. Oh, just don't worry about the way you look. Your fat is beautiful, blah, blah, blah. No. Fat is not beautiful. I want to have a ripped, sculpted body and therefore I'm going to work on it and it's going to make me healthier as well. Or just spend time in front of the TV, it's okay to relax. No, I'm going to be productive. I'm going to be doing something valuable with my life. It's all aligned. All of these things are aligned because you find too that as you engage in them, you start to see through the things that you always were told were good but at the end of the day, we're not. Lifting lifts that veil. When you finally, you become red-pilled. It's the best way to describe it. You are finally red-pilled. You see the wood for what it is. Because lifting is one plus one equals two. It's very strict. It's very regimented. And it doesn't need bullshit. It's going to just finally resent to you. Right? It's going to teach you that most important lesson. That you get in what you put in. And this is personal responsibility 101. Something that many people lack. Most people actually lack personal responsibility because all of the things I described that are plaguing our planet right now, if people took responsibility for their life, all of that would also go away because they would finally reclaim their agency. Lifting 
helps you reclaim your agency for all of the people who think lost, who think, oh, fate is just moving me from left to right and I have no control. Lift. Control your lifting and it's going to show you that you are in control of your life, always. And since we reject the approval of society because we do the exact opposite of what it tells us to do, we also stop caring about social acceptance, which again, as I said, is paradoxically the way you become more socially uh, apt. You stop caring about what people think and you're just you. If they're not happy, so be it. What does it matter? You love yourself. You, once you have reached the point where you love yourself, people are going to start loving you because people gravitate towards strength. And strength is not just, as I said, the ability to be stronger than the average person. It's the strength of character. No one likes a doormat. No one. Predators like doormats because they can use them. But people who want to find valuable partners or mates or friends in life are going to be looking into strength. Anyone who is not looking into strength, as I said, and is attracted by weaknesses tends to be predatorial because they know that they can actually feast on these people. If you become strong, no one can feast on you. No one can prey on you because you are now the strong. And the strong cannot be submitted. The strong cannot be threatened because he's strong. It's as simple as that. Just by doing so, you are ensuring that you are going to have a much safer life, which is, again, also paradoxical, right? You would think, oh, you're getting more muscular and maybe it's just going to lead down a path of, you know, more conflict or turmoil, whatever. But that's the exact opposite. My life, when I was skinny and small, was an endless cycle of bullying, of battles I didn't want to fight, and of brawls that I couldn't escape because I was weak. You don't get to pick your battles when you're weak. People pick them for you. The second I became big, all of that went away. I haven't had to fight in six, seven years. Why? Because no one fucks with me. And no one will fuck with you either. Because Not necessarily because you'll be a monster, but because when someone who's a predator looks for someone to pick on, they're not going to pick on the guy who's massive. Why would they do that? It makes absolutely no sense. It's like if a hyena was looking for a prey and they selected the biggest lion in his prime. They, don't, they won't do that. It's too risky. They go for the weaklings. They go for the one who has a limp. If you don't have that limp and you're just that lion, no one is going to go for you. And paradoxically, again, you'll get to live a peaceful life. If you want to live a peaceful life, become a warrior. It's the best choice. This is also why we lived. If you're someone who hates violence and who wants world peace, the best way to do that is to become strong, is to become big. Why? Because the weak has no choice between virtue and evil. The weak has, in a sense, to be virtuous, but that's not really virtue anymore. He has no choice. There's no free will in this. You have no way to know if that person wouldn't be evil if you gave them the power to be. But for you, you're strong. You could bully people. You could make them feel bad. I could be the asshole who goes to the beach and makes everyone feel bad about themselves. But I don't. Why? I don't need to. I'm securing myself. I love myself. I want everyone to love themselves. It's the best gift I can give to humanity. And therefore, I'm not going to use my powers in that fashion. Instead, I'm going to help people feel better about themselves one way or another. Even if I have to hurt their feelings to do so, doesn't matter because at the end of the day, if I put them through pain and they get benefits at the end, then the pain was worth it. But if you stay incapable for the rest of your life, then okay, maybe you're kind and nice, but you never had a choice in the first place. So it doesn't count. Give yourself the ability to be a tyrant and then be kind. Now it counts. Now it matters. Now you're virtuous. And if we're talking about philosophy, this might be the best reason to lift. It's to allow yourself the full range of human emotions and not just be cantoned, which is a word that doesn't exist and I just made up, into that tiny corner where you're forced to be nice to people because if you're not, they're going to stomp on you. And as we do that, we follow our ancestors. And what I mean by that is that we engage in a ritual of sort because Lifting is a ritual. It's become ritualized. It's something that is as close to religion as one could be. You go to a specific place with the same people every day and you go to a specific equipment and you do a certain movement with a certain tempo for an exact amount of reps 
and then you go home. This is just deeply spiritual in a sense. There's an aspect to lifting that is just so underrated, and that's that. That's that endless practice of showing up and actually putting in the work. And this is, I think, what our ancestors would have wanted. Meaning that if I could interrogate 20 people in my life and I told them, hey, between deadlifting, my body, my body weight times two for reps, or sitting on the couch and watching Netflix, which should I pick? Like, who do you think and what do you think that panel is going to select? They're going to select the physical activity. Why? Because their wisdom as ancestors would dictate that they know this is the best for me. And also because it's most likely something that they're very familiar with. Keep in mind that us, our generation, is going to be the first generation that knows absolutely nothing about physical labor and work. You have guys my age in their 30s who have never actually used their body to do anything strenuous in their life besides PE. This is catastrophic and terrifying because they are lost. They are lacking in something that their entire ancestry line has been doing forever. And therefore, if you want to connect with the roots of your ethnicity, of who you are, lifting is the best thing. In reality, you are invoking and summoning the spirits of your ancestors every single time you lift. Because I can tell you the, for a fact that in your line again of ancestry, there were more people who worked blue collar jobs with their hands than people who sit at, the, at an office all day watching Facebook and whatever and drinking coffee. And therefore, this is bringing you back to a very healthy place, at least spiritually. And you also return to the earth and the physical, which as I said, is very important. Too many people are disconnected from that. Uh, I said it, I think, in my, my white collar video, when I talk about programming for people who have a desk job like me, lifting is not just muscles. It's also going to help you realize that, yes, you have a body, it moves, and if you want it to move forever, you're going to have to keep it moving, and you're going to have to get it stronger and bigger. This is also why we lift. You want to be able to be active when you're older, you better lift. All of the people I know who are still just like young bucks, uh, agile and dynamic, all of these people, they did physical labor their entire life. So yes, there's the entire thing about people who break their backs, but I can tell you that most of the people I know who worked constructions or in the field in their youth don't fall into that category. They're all in their 70s, 80s, sometimes 90s, and they're still physically active. The best example I can give you for why you should lift is my grandpa. My grandpa is 92. 92 years old. He started working construction when he was 14. He's been working in the field since he was nine. To this day, this man still wakes up at 5 a.m. every single day and works in the field for three hours. Do you understand what that means? I have seen this man down a tree, then cut the tree with his foot that close to the chainsaw, then carry the tree on his shoulder at the age, at the age of 90. Most people at 90 are dead. Dead. Most people, by the time they're 70, they can barely move. That man is still a savage. I've seen him carry pigs on his shoulders. I have so many tales to tell you about this man. But pretty much what he told me was that this was done through physical activity. You want to keep it, move it. And what is the best way to build muscle mass that you're going to carry forward in your old age? Lifting. This is why we lift. You, do you want to be incapable of getting up, of bending over when you're in your 60s? Many modern men are like this, many modern women. You don't want to be that guy. You want to go against what society tells you and you want to stay lifting. And for the last line, or actually the last two lines, beyond just the muscle you put on, because yes, muscle is aesthetic, it's functional, it's great, I'm in love with muscle. Beyond that, it transcends it because we're doing what we're born to do and that connects to what I just said. We're born to do this stuff. Like I felt it in my bones when I lift. I was born to do this. Not necessarily to bodybuild, but just to be physically active and strain. Humans were born to struggle and strain. I can tell you that to make someone miserable, if you want to break someone and make their life a living hell, you remove struggle. To take struggle, you take all of the difficulties in their life and you take it away, you have just put that person into the deepest pit of hell. Depression is sure to rise. Why? You removed what makes them human. 
you remove what makes them actually go through something. Humans need something. We need events. We need things to happen in our lives. And I can tell you that the strongest people are the ones who had the most difficulties to go through. Because at the end of the day, it makes you stronger. It's like progressive overload. It's like resistance training. You lift one day, two days, three days. After 40 days, each day adds up to strength, to size. It's the same for life. And therefore, you want to embrace that struggle. Don't run away from it. Don't create it artificially. Just take it. It's going to be thrown your way regardless. So just take it. And in reality, lifting also makes it so that you can pick your struggles. So this is there's just no excuse to not do it. It's in a controlled environment, right? No one forces you. I'm not comparing lifting to blue collar jobs, by the way. I'm not because I choose to lift. But think about this. Think about the privilege that we're enjoying. There are people who work 12 hours a day stacking bricks in shitty third world countries. They don't have a choice. They don't have a choice. You and I, we take time out of our weeks. We invest money and energy into doing something that is completely just out of the realm of anything that we need to do for our survival. And yet we do. This is what's so beautiful about lifting too. We do. Once you stick to it long enough, you'll realize that you cannot live without it. For me, if I stopped lifting for five days, I would go insane. I know it. I would go like clinically insane because I need it, both for my mental health and just for the way it makes my body feel. Bro, sometimes I stop lifting for two days. Two days is the max I can do when I have a lot of work or I'm traveling. My body starts to ache. Not that, I, that I'm injured. I'm like a drug addict. My body is like, okay, you haven't used that muscle for two days. How about I make it feel painful? Huh? Do you want to do something about it? It's like it's blackmailing me, but it's the best type of blackmail ever. And therefore, you will fall in love with it. Like, there's no way around that. Lifting is such a, a, a delightful darling that if you are honest about it, just like any relationship and you invest yourself, it's going to give you so much back that you're never going to even think about di divorcing. It's the reason why I don't get people who stop lifting. I don't. If you're part of that category who stops lifting for six months, oh, I took a break. You took a break? You took a break from happiness? You took a break from mental stability? From being a man? From actually living the human existence? I don't get it. I just do not get it. I think that you're just deeply mistaken. And so, as we do what we're born to do, and we struggle, we become our own power fantasy. And it sort of connects with what I said at the start. We might begin because we hate the body that we have. And we finally build it into something that we love. And once you reach that point, you're going to be so confident that you're going to piss people off, as I said. I'm going to be honest with you. When I catch my reflection in a mirror, I'm in love. Like, are you kidding me? Of course I am. I used to be the kid that would avoid mirrors. I hated pictures. Why? Because I didn't like what I saw. But now, I look amazing. So why wouldn't I enjoy it? And this... As you reach that, means that you've manifested something so great that you are now starting to admire your own stuff. You have become your own male power, male power fantasy. You started, and maybe just like me, you were inspired by mangas or comics or I don't know, and you reach a point where you wouldn't even need that anymore. Meaning that I share my inspiration with mangas because I want you guys to get into it and because the topic is interesting to me too, but I don't need it anymore. I've I've built such a mountain of discipline that I am self-reliant. Like, this is me. You could remove all of the humans on Earth. I would still be lifting because it's part of me now. I don't need other people anymore. I don't need their approval. I, I just need me. Me and my weights. That's it. Me and my body is all you need. And once you reach that point, you become dangerous uh, because you could just also just return and potentially fall into some problem for some issues because you could return to the animalistic part of who you are, which is a discussion about mental health that we need to have, we'll have eventually. But for the most part, it also means that you now are an entity that has ceased to need others to exist and paradoxically now can be of best use. It's something that I discussed in my individual video. The end goal of individuality is not to be alone. It's to be surrounded by people who are attracted by your individuality because they understand they can build it too. And as I said, now that you're 
you are your very own male power fantasy, you can become other people's male power fantasy that they themselves will use to reach the point where they become their own hero. This is the story of, uh, of heroes, by the way. It's the, the, the hero of a thousand masks. If you haven't read that book, I encourage you to do it. Young men seek role models to elevate themselves. The best way to get to that point is lifting. As you have gotten to that point, you look back and you realize one thing. One, you don't need the role models anymore. Two, you are the role model. And there's nothing more beautiful than that. Because now you can give back. Right? This is also why we lift. To give back. Lifting is going to give you so much, it's never going to ask for anything back. Ever. You will never get a letter in the mail from Mr. Lifting that asks for something. But that is because you should be giving back organically to people who haven't started yet. And this is what I'm doing with this channel and with this video. Because I want to encourage people. The gifts that were bestowed upon me by lifting are too precious for words to explain. But if I can tell you one thing and leave you with one thing to close this video, it's going to be this. Why do we lift? Because it's the best thing that you could be doing in your life. And that's it. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.